Hello, welcome to Advanced Composites. In the current seventh week of this course, today is the fifth day, and what we start plan to start today is a new theme of discussion, and that relates to thermal effects in composite laminates. The reason we are going to uh, discuss these effects is because these effects are extremely important in context of composite laminates, because most of the times when composite laminates are fabricated, they are fabricated at elevated temperatures, uh, which could be more than 100 degrees or 150 degrees centigrade. So, it is at that temperatures that several phases of the uh, laminate fibers and matrix, they are processed and they are heated till that temperature. And then at that temperature, the reaction happens and everything solidifies and then the composite is brought down to room temperatures. So, as the material is brought down to room temperatures, inbuilt stresses may develop because of temperature effects, even though there may not be any external forces applied on the system. So, how do we compute these uh, stresses and strains in composites? It is an imp extremely important question and what we plan to do today, tomorrow and maybe one day in the next week is to discuss how these effects can be accounted for and calculated. So, that is what is the agenda for next few days. So, what we are going to discuss is thermal effects. Thermal effects in composites. Now, if there is no thermal effect, then we already know the stress strain relations between for uh, for a single layer and that is sigma we are talking about an axis system which is aligned to the material axis of the layer. So, we are talking about stresses at a at an individual layer. So, this is equal to q 1 1 times epsilon 1 plus q 1 2 times epsilon 2 and there is no q 1 6 because this is the material axis system is aligned to the loading axis. Okay. Similarly, sigma 2 is equal to q 1 1 excuse me q 1 2 times epsilon 1 plus q 2 2 times epsilon 2 and tau x y no sorry tau 1 2 equals q 6 6 gamma 1 2. So, these expressions they essentially come out from the original Hooke's law, but when temperature effects are there then this Hooke's law has to be modified and once it is modified these are the relations for modified Hooke's law. Sigma 1 equals q 1 1 and instead of epsilon 1 I have epsilon 1 minus alpha 1 times delta t plus q 1 2 times epsilon 2 minus alpha 2 times delta t. <coughs> so, this is a modified host law and what is alpha? Alpha 1 is coefficient of thermal expansion of the material in one direction, alpha 2 is coefficient of thermal expansion 
in two direction okay and delta t is change in temperature it could be positive or negative so similarly sigma 2 using modified hooks law is q 1 2 epsilon 1 minus alpha 1 delta t plus q 2 2 times epsilon 2 minus alpha 2 delta t okay. and tau 1 2 is equal to q 6 6 times gamma 1 2 because alpha 1 2 bar is or no thing as alpha 1 2 bar. Okay. So, this is the modified Hooke's law. Now, if I want to move from 1 2 axis system to an x y axis system, then what do I do? So, sigma x, sigma y, tau x y is equal to so, this is in the 1 2 axis system. So, we will write down the relations for x y or coordinate system also. So, for x y coordinate system, we have a q bar matrix. So, q 1 1 bar, q 1 2 bar, q 1 6 bar, q 2 2 bar, q 2 6 bar, q 6 6 bar and all these this symmetric matrix and we know how to compute its values, but then it is not just multiplied to epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y vector, but it also accounts for thermal strains. So, this is epsilon x, epsilon y, gamma x y minus alpha x times delta t minus alpha y times delta t and minus alpha x y times delta t. So, it should be remembered that in x y coordinate system there is an alpha x y which is non zero, but in the 1 2 coordinate system alpha 1 2 is 0. Now, what is the difference between epsilon x and this thing? So, these strains are the actual strains in the system. These are actual strains. So, if you how, what do you mean by actual strain? If you put a strain gauge on it, you will measure it, and whatever is the measured value, these are those strains, actual strains, physically observable strains. These strains they are thermal effects these are thermal effects so we will illustrate by an example suppose we have an aluminum bar and i heat it and the bar is free to expand the bar is free to expand. Then what will happen? When it expands, epsilon x will be not 0, right? It is expanding. So, if I put a strain gauge here, if I put a strain gauge here, it will actually measure the strain. So, epsilon x what do I say? I said it, we, these are the actual strains. So, epsilon x will not be 0 and alpha x and delta t will also be not 0 and it will be just that it will expand by the same amount which will be equal to alpha x times delta t. Right? So, so, in this case epsilon x 
will be equal to alpha x times delta t. It will expand by that amount and then the unit per unit uh, expansion is called the strain. So, this epsilon x minus alpha x times delta t when you add these up it will come, come to be 0. The sum of this and this will come out to be 0. So, what will be the stress when a aluminum bar is free to expand? It is not experiencing any stresses. So, our model should be such that it should predict 0 stress. So, all these three vectors in that case uh, components of the vectors they will be 0 and when they are 0 it will mean that sigma x will be q 1 1 times 0 plus q 1 2 times 0 plus q 1 6 times 0. So, external stress will come out to be 0 understood and that is what is the reality. So, it works. Now, consider the case other case when we have an aluminum bar and again we are heating it and we are again we are putting some strain gauges to measure the expansions in x y and all these things, but one thing what we are doing is we are constraining. So, it cannot expand and we are heating it. So, what will happen? The actual strain in the bar will be 0, actual strain in the bar will be 0 and alpha x times delta t will not be 0. Similarly, epsilon y will be 0 and alpha y times delta t will not be 0 and so on and so forth. Okay. So, when that happens the sum of this epsilon x and alpha x delta t will not be 0, but it will be a negative quantity and when it is a negative quantity and it gets multiplied by q 1 1 q 1 2 and all this you will find that sigma x sigma y and tau x y they may not be necessarily 0, they may be compressive entities. Okay. So, this is how we compute thermal stresses. Okay. So, in the strain vector we have not just epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y which is the actual strain, but we subtract from that the thermal effect and then we multiply that modified strain vector with the q bar matrix to get stresses at each ply level. This is very important to understand. So, the next question is that alpha 1 L alpha 2 these are material properties and they are so we can measure them we can measure them, but if we move from 1 uh, 1 2 axis system to x y axis system how do we calculate alpha x alpha y and alpha x y. Because unless we know these I cannot compute all these numbers in the green block. So, that is the next thing I will write down. So, these are basically strain transformation equations. So, alpha x, alpha y and gamma x y is equal to cosine square theta, sin square theta, sin square theta, cosine square theta. sin 2 theta minus sin 2 theta <coughs> and actually the third column it really does not matter and the reason it does not matter is because alpha 1 is not 0, alpha 2 is not 0, but alpha 1 2 is always 0. Okay. So, using these relations we can calculate alpha x alpha y alpha x y. Okay. So, this is the modified Hooke's law. Now, if we have this modified Hooke's law then how do so next thing is 
uh, A B D relations, how do they change? How do they change? Okay. So, our original relations are N M is equal to A B B and D epsilon x naught and k x y naught right. These are the original relations. So, these relations are valid when no thermal effect no thermal effect. Now, let us look at what happens when thermal effects are present. So, we will just do an example. What is N x? N x we had defined was integral from minus h by 2 to h by 2 sigma x d z. This is how we had defined N x right. It is the force resultant that is force per unit length and this was this is sigma x is what q 1 1 bar epsilon x uh, plus q 1 2 bar epsilon y plus q 1 6 bar gamma x y d x. Okay. So, this is the this was the relation when no temperature effect, but now we have a modified Hooke's law right. So, in presence of temperature in presence of temperature what is n x? If I have to compute n x it will be minus h by 2 to h by 2 q 1 1 bar times epsilon x minus alpha x delta t right plus q 1 2 bar times epsilon y minus alpha y times delta t plus q 1 6 bar times gamma x y minus alpha x y times delta t and this entire thing has to be integrated d z. So, there should be here also it should be d z. Okay. And minus h by 2 to h by 2, if I integrate it, now I can break it up into a temperature related component and a non temperature related component. So, q 1 1 bar and we also know that what is epsilon x? This is equal to epsilon x naught plus z k x naught right, huh? this is right. So, this is and so on and so forth. So, I do that substitution. So, I get epsilon x naught plus q 1 2 epsilon y naught plus q 1 2 bar gamma x y naught. So, these are the mid plane strain components d z plus minus h by 2 h by 2 I get q 1 1 bar and then there is a z here k x naught plus q 1 2 bar k y naught plus q 1 6 bar oh I am sorry this is this should be q 1 6 
one six and this is also q one q one six q one six bar k x y bar d z plus the temperature component uh, plus the temperature component. So, in the temperature component I have negatives. So, I will put a minus sign here minus sign h by 2 to h by 2 minus and I have q 1 1 bar alpha x delta t actually I will take delta t outside plus q 1 2 bar times alpha y plus q 1 6 bar times alpha x y times delta t times d z. Huh? Alpha, alpha x y term is here, Hota hai because when we do the strain transformation we have seen this, see this so alpha x y is there and alpha x y and alpha x alpha y you can compute from these relations, so alpha x y is not necessarily 0. Okay. So, now when I do all this essentially what I end up getting is n x is equal to a 1 1 epsilon x naught plus a 1 2 epsilon y naught plus a 1 6 gamma x y naught. So, these terms are coming from the first integral then from the second integral I get the b terms b 1 1 k x y naught no I am sorry k x naught plus b 1 2 k y naught plus b 1 6 k x y naught. So, so this I am getting from the second integral from here and the first component set of components are coming from the first integral and then from the third integral I can add up all these things all these things. Okay. So, I get a third term from the third one. So, I get minus and I get n x t hat times delta t and this I am getting from the third integral n x hat. Okay. So, what is n x hat? It is equal to, so if I am integrating it is and because this is a laminated composite I have to replace this integral by a summation sign. So, this is equal to k is equal to 1 to n q 1 1 alpha x bar plus q 1 2 alpha y bar plus q 1 6 alpha x y and this is we compute for the kth layer and then we add up all these things hmm. and oh I am sorry. So, this has to be multiplied by z k minus z k minus 1 basically the thickness of the layer. So, this is n x hat. Okay. So, likewise I can compute other things n y hat and n x y hat. So, I get, so these are the three relations I get for n and then I get similarly three other relations for moment resultants. So, overall my set of equations become 
n m equals a b b d times epsilon naught times k naught curvature matrix minus n t m t where n t and m t equals n t hat and m t hat times delta t. Okay, because there is a delta t term here if you remember. So, the integral of everything in the bracket over the thickness is n x hat n y hat and so on and so forth, but then you have to multiply it by delta t term. So, this is what I wanted to cover today. Tomorrow we will extend this discussion and we will also see what happens to the governing differential equations and the boundary conditions and then we will start solving an actual problem and see where it leads us. So, that is all for today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.